Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're going to talk about a new mod which has recently dropped on the workshop which is actually going to make Malekith have a fun campaign. I know that might sound weird but Malekith being Malekith he is one of the most important Dark Elves there and he just feels a bit too vanilla. It's a thing that's affecting a lot of lords, especially in Warhammer 3, as we're seeing certain lords getting their own unique mechanics, but some of them are falling behind at the moment. Hopefully in the future we'll see something officially, but until then, this is Malekith's True Phoenix King campaign by Rox. And it's a rather interesting one, because it goes by quite a decent amount of lore, taking from the end times too. And the great thing is that it doesn't change up your campaign, in fact it's pretty much the same way as usual. You just go play and then make your way down to Ulfwan. So let's talk about what you need to do in this mod. So you start off your campaign as normal and you will notice you've got a new thing up there at the top called True Phoenix King. And this is, as you can expect, the mechanic that Alariel uses just kind of changed to be more of a Dark Elven one. So at the beginning you will suffer minus diplomatic relations with the High Elves, but that's a given anyway. Loss of control for all provinces, but it's only very minor, so you won't really notice it too much. And you do have some benefits for all your armies, which is extra weapon strength and extra spell resistance. Now, this is something that's going to change as your campaign progresses, but the good thing is that early on you can pretty much take out Elifanar without too much of an issue. Like I said, continue your campaign as normal, and then when you're ready to go to Ulf 1, go to Ulf 1. Now, I'm using a cheat mod here, which brings me to Ulf 1 at turn 1. I could actually just pick the settlement, and what you'll see already is when you start taking settlements, you'll start getting more of your influence there, right? Your dominion over Ulf 1. And that means that you will get less negatives, for example, minus diplomatic relations. Still doesn't mean much because they do have a lot of aversion against you. But that also means that your benefits will get weaker too. Don't worry, there's some benefits that will come as you start taking more and more. So the theme with this mod is that Malekith is trying to take over Ulf 1 so he can become the rightful Phoenix King. This is more end times law than again in normal pre-end times law. He still was very much, I am still the Phoenix King. But basically, the mod has three phases that you will need to do to be able to get all the benefits. Phase 1 is getting the outer realm of Ulf 1 and as you do so, you'll start to get more and more benefits as you can see on screen right now. You'll get income increases, recruitment cost reductions, this is all provinces and faction wide. To put it this way, if you've taken a while to get here and you've already got a bustling empire, you're only just going to get stronger economically, which I know a lot of people would be interested in considering that vanilla kind of nerfed the big economic bonuses that you did have with, well, the Dark Elves in general. Obviously, you'll probably take a while to do this anyway, considering that attacking Ulf 1 at the very beginning is not going to be a smart idea, as most of these factions will have very high aversion to you and start declaring war on you the moment you get, well, in diplomatic distance. Phase 2 kicks in once you've captured enough of the Outer Rim, and it won't take too long, it will have a little pop-up too, you know, just like one of those things of uh, world events, right? And after that, you just have to take in the Inner Circle too. That will get you all the way up to 65%, and you'll already start getting some pretty good bonuses. Income from all buildings faction-wide plus 10% is absolutely insane. And really, once you start arriving with some Black Ox and so, you won't really have too much of a problem. And the benefits get themselves even better once you take over Orf 1 fully, because once you take over every settlement, you'll be stuck at 65%. The only time that it gets stronger in terms of your dominion over Orf 1 is by, well, holding every single settlement. This is phase 3, and you'll already notice that the uh, bonuses are pretty good. They get stronger as time progresses. You'll also have some chances, not always, but it's just a chance, of being able to either recruit a Star Dragon or Sisters of Avalon, Phoenix Guard or Soul Masters of Hoeth, or maybe some Lothar and Sea Guard with some shields, which, yeah, you'll be able to mix and match some High Elves with some Dark Elves, very much like you could do in the end times when you were playing as the Elven factions mixed up together. It was a stupid list with way too many overpowered units. The benefits will get better and better as your percentage rises, and you can see here at 76%, it's already pretty tasty, especially the extra research speed, as this means that you're going to be able to go down that tech tree a lot faster. Now, I tried this myself on a legendary very hard campaign, and it took a while for me to actually get to Ulf 1, and even then, I was already getting Bretonia declaring war on me, and pretty much everyone else. So holding Ulf 1 in harder difficulties does become a bit of an issue, 
but that's the challenge. You're trying to hold your dominion over the location. But it gets a little bit more interesting because as you are aware, the Dark Elves generally have more tolerance towards you because, well, you're their leader. But when you start taking over all these areas, you will notice that any remaining high elf factions that you haven't destroyed will start to have more tolerance to you. So this is a Lifanar who just really likes us now. And this is a great thing because this means that you can have a united elven front. You're not going to get a lot of tolerance from the wood elves, uh, but the wood elves aren't really included in this mod. But either way, those terrifying end times lists from back in the day, uh, those were mostly mixed between high elves and dark elves. And when I say they were scary, they were actually scary. So regarding the high elf unit recruitment, this is something very important to note. It kind of works, well, identically to the Warriors of Chaos system, where the percentage, it doesn't show, it shows here 0%, but it's the percentage that shows up when you actually scroll over the actual mechanic itself. But yeah, this is how it works. You just have to wait and every time that you end a turn, you might get lucky and you might get a new uh, Swordmaster of Hoa for Phoenix Guard and stuff like that. Which is kind of cool because yeah, it's thematic. Eventually, if Malekith does take over, this is actually something that happened during the end times, High Elves do bend the knee, because at the end of the day, they're like, well, yeah, he's the Phoenix King, we should bend the knee. Now, don't get me wrong, the End Times law is complete and utter garbage, but the idea is to give you a unique experience, and I think this does it really, really well. And what you can see on the screen right now is once you have complete dominion over Ulf 1, you can see that there's a lot of bonuses there, stuff for all your armies, extra diplomatic relations with all the High Elf factions that may remain, so... Likely at this point just techless. 50% increase the research rate, which would kind of fit well because at the time that you take over Ulf 1, you're probably in the last stretch of the tech, so you kind of just want to get it over and done with. Hell, you even get martial prowess for your Black Guard, your Dread Spears, your Bleak Swords, and also your Dark Shards. This is all armies. The benefits themselves are pretty good, and yeah, it's going to take a while for you to get these once you play a normal campaign, but I feel like this gives you a proper reason to have a proper endgame for Malekith, right? which is kind of needed for a lot of the characters, let's be honest. A lot of vanilla characters need a proper endgame. And this takes from lore, and it's quite nice to have a reason to go to Orthwan. I played this in my own personal campaign for a few hours, and I took over the lands that you'd expect to take over as Malekif. I also had uh, Morafi as a buffer so that the Lizardmen could leave me the hell alone. Uh, same thing with Hellebron staying up there. And as soon as I had taken over pretty much all the normal Dark Elf lands, I launched an invasion of Ulf 1. It definitely gave me a feeling of, I need to go here, I need to get these benefits, because it's going to make my campaign a little bit more bearable, it's going to give me a lot more benefits, it's going to make my economy better. Yeah, this is great. This is honestly really, really good. If you want to try it out, it's in the description below. I honestly really recommend it. Let me know what you guys think about it too in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion.